So this was meant to be a really short video on cinematic movement and explaining how we get movement to look good and look slick and look easy and it ended up turning super technical and super long. So stick with it, hopefully there's quite a lot to learn. So we're talking about cinematic movement, we're talking about 180 degree shutter rule. I started making this video, I'd recorded all this stuff once before and then watched it back and realised I was, I was boring myself. Um, so I've tried to make it a bit more interesting and I just want to get it done. Basically I want to show you exactly what I mean. Hopefully there'll be a few more fun videos but this one should be more educational. So see what you think of this one. I went down to Farnham and uh, recorded a whole lot of movement with friend of mine John who owns a gym down there breathe in Farnham and made a short film of it so see what you think <laughs> So that was a short film I did with John. I hope you liked it. Coming from photography to videography, it was a real change of mindset in terms of how you capture movement. As a photographer, you've kind of got two options. You either go for really long exposure, so if you're doing a landscape with waterfalls or movement, you blur everything by using a very long shutter speed, or you catch a really short burst moment. Problem is that as a videographer, you need to try and make everything look smooth because you're using so many short images. So the 180 degree shutter rule is the idea that your shutter speed should be half your frame rate. I've got what was meant to be a really short little diagram to explain this, but it ended up turning into something much longer. So that's coming up shortly. But essentially this clip that I took originally with John a few years ago, I wanted to be able to film him punching on the bag. I'd been taking photographs before, been capturing some really nice crisp images, and I just thought I want to film this. So I tried filming it and you can see it just it looks jumpy, it looks choppy, and I didn't know why, so I went away, I researched it, I looked into it. I have now understood and understand about making cinematic movements, so have a little look at the diagram. I'm then gonna go over some examples and show you what I mean with some of the footage that I shot with John, and hopefully it'll be interesting, so see what you think. Right, let's try and explain this, drawing it. I don't know how easy this is going to be to explain it by drawing it, but it made sense in my mind. We want to try and capture movement. So, this is our time frame. This is our movement. If we want to film it at 24 frames a second, which means that each second becomes 24 frames on the film. That's frame, that's frame, frame, frame. Each of these boxes is 1 24th of a second. So in a whole second, you'd have 24 of these boxes. This is our frame rate, but this is not our shutter speed. Our shutter speed will depend on how long we then leave the shutter open for each frame. So when I first shot with John, I left a really quick shutter speed, 
left open. So it's always the first part that is actually open. So if we're using, say, hundredth of a second, one five hundredth of a second, one thousandth of a second, we only get this small amount of movement. So let's call this one thousandth of a second. So suddenly our shutter speed, that does say shutter, is one one thousandth of a second. It only gives us a very small amount of information in each window. So when we see it and we're playing it back, we're not seeing any of this movement, but we're only seeing this movement. Not seeing any of this, but we are seeing this. And so the problem is that our eyes don't fill, our brain doesn't fill in the gaps. In an ideal world, you should be using a shutter speed that is half your frame rate. So if our frame rate is 1 24th of a second, our shutter speed in an ideal world would be 1 48th. Now the problem is, not a lot of cameras will have 1 48th, so let's call it 1 50. So here, that's the movement, that's the blank gap. And you can see we get a lot more detail in each movement than we did previously. If we then want to go down and we want to start filming slow motion, we want to make it look really super smooth. We've got our timeline again, and we break it up into smaller fragments. So let's say we use 48 frames per second frame rate. So you can see we've doubled the number of frames that we take in the same amount of time. Our movement is still roughly speaking the same, but each of our frames catches a smaller portion of that movement. Now in this case again, if we use a really high shutter speed, say one five hundredth of a second, and we leave the first bit open and we cover up the rest, you see it causes slightly less of an issue. There's less of a gap between each bit of movement. But the problem is there's still too much movement to too much gap. If we're using 48 frames a second, is actually if we use a hundredth of a second, we get half our frame being open. And what you can see with this compared to the previous one is we're capturing more fine movement, but we're capturing it more regularly. What we can then do is stretch that out. So if we take this bit, those four frames, double the frame rate, so it'll play back at the same speed of that, the difference is our movement is much slower. So because we've left it open for only half of each frame, we're still capturing as much movement as we did here. We're just playing it back slower over twice the amount of time. So yeah, like I said, that diagram was meant to be 30 seconds at most but it turned into something a little bit more. Here's some examples on video of the movement that I'm talking about in terms of the jumpiness and in terms of that movement and getting that really nice flow of movement. So I hope this backs up with the diagram to show you exactly what I mean. So we're just gonna have a look at a couple of clips here. First one is John on the battle ropes. This is at the correct 180 degree shutter rule. This is at the wrong shutter speed. Oh, I said wrong shutter speed. We slow it down, this is at 24 frames a second at 1 50th of a second shutter speed. When we stop it, you can see that there is blur in every bit of the picture that is moving. So the battle rope, his hands, everything that's still is obviously completely stationary, but everything that should be moving there is blur. When we then do the same thing to the wrong shutter speed, particularly as it slows down, it becomes more and more obvious that there is absolute crispness in the ropes. This is what we're seeing, this is why it looks jumpy. Again, with the battle ropes, as we slow it down, you can see the blur becomes more and more obvious to the point where you can't even see the rope. And then if we do it at the significantly shorter shutter speed, you can see just how crisp the rope is actually when it's stopped. And that's why it looks jumpy. Difficulty comes when you actually slow things right down. So actually where the mo motion is slower, it makes less obvious difference. So these two clips, the second one was filmed at the 180 degree shutter rule at 1 50th of a second. This first one was filmed at 1 thousandth of a second. Other than the lights flashing in the background, which is a artifact caused by the fact that the shutter speed is faster than the refresh rate of the lights, I don't think those two actually look significantly different. And when you slow it down, again, you can see, ignoring the light flickering in the background. You can see that the motion is so slow. Here we've got the 1,000th of a shutter speed. You see there's no motion in his feet at all at that point. In the second one, actually the motion is so slow that the, the blur is so little that it actually makes very little difference to the shot. Here in this punching shot, the first one is again at 1,000th of a second and the second one is at 1 50th of a second. 
this is where the rule becomes a little bit more fluid because actually in the first clip I actually think this looks more aggressive there's something that is more visceral about the punch whereas in the second clip everything looks very smooth and it looks beautiful and it definitely looks more cinematic but you've got to question whether the impact that it gives it actually is enough to justify breaking the 180 degree shutter rule. This is one of these fascinating things about projects that in my head this was going to be a really short informative video. I just hadn't looked at the, the size and scale of the topic and actually the information that I wanted to get across and how in depth it ended up being. But this is also a really good lesson for me. I watched a Peter McKinnon video recently and he was talking about it's better to be done than be perfect. And I think this video is a perfect example of it, even though it's just done, not perfect. But it's working hard to make sure that I can show you what I mean. I hope it's been useful. Please like or subscribe, it'd be really useful to help build my channel. I promise not all the videos will be quite this techy, honestly. So like or subscribe, leave a comment below about what you'd like to see in the future, if there was anything that I covered in this video that didn't quite make sense, and if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in a future video. So have a good day, and thank you very much.